Miss Annette Groth, welcome to our Parliamentary Assembly's Media Box. So your report on a stronger European response to the Syrian refugee crisis adopted yesterday in the Parliamentary Assembly session. So let's start with, uh, I would like to first ask your observations and analysis on the current situation uh, on the refugee crisis, Syrian refugee crisis in Europe. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't have to say much. I guess it's fairly known that this crisis, the situation of the refugees is horrible. You know, one of the most uh, urgent uh, yeah, problems to address are the 50,000 uh, Syrian refugees at the Syrian-Jordanian uh, border. Uh, there's a big amount of, of refugees also um, between Turkey and Syria and also Lebanon. Um, so, and these people, and, and of, on top of it, uh, Idomeni, close to Firon border, Greek, uh, uh, Greece, uh, Firon border, se approximately 17,000 in a, well, illegal or wild camp. Um, many of those women, and there are lots of women and, and kids uh, in this uh, camp, have apparently um, husbands or partners um, in EU member countries, and uh, we will really request uh, acceleration of family reunification procedures. Uh, at the moment, the, the situation is like this, that uh, <laughs> there are three hours per week, apparently. You can, via Skype, you have to make an appointment with the asylum uh, office in Saloniki, in Thessaloniki. Now try from Idomini uh, to reach uh, uh, whatever kind of uh, telephone number via Skype. It is not possible. Yeah? So, uh, and that means practically no family reunification is happening. Uh, and, and this is urgent uh, demand to really to solve this problem. But we should really send, you know, civil servants to Idomini and then, you know, from Belgium, Holland, Germany, um, and interview the people and assess the papers and then send a plane uh, from, from Saloniki, uh, Thessaloniki to, to the um, countries where the husbands are. There's a lot of psychological stress, stress the husbands as well as the wives and, and kids because they don't know what will happen to them. Mm -hmm. huh? And as you mentioned in the report, uh, in the, even in the title, the European response. So the role of the European countries is very important to tackle with this issue. What would you like to say about that? Is it enough or no. what should I have done, especially your recommendations uh, to the Parliamentary Assembly and Council of Europe member states? I mean, uh, Europe slept for quite some time. I met the advisor for the um, Minister for Social Affairs in Lebanon. She told me that the past two, three years, she alarmed, alerted uh, the U EU embassy on, about the critical situation of the refugees in Lebanon. She said, nobody ever listened to me. Huh? All of a sudden now I, I receive one high level delegation from EU member countries after the other. Yes, she said, no, it's uh, nearly too late. Okay, you know that there was not enough funding for the UNHCR and World Food Programme, so they reduced substantially the food rations. So people, you know, they were hungry. So that was one reason why then they uh, went to Turkey and, uh, and, and to Greece. They left Lebanon and Jordan because before you starve and hunger, die of hunger, you better, I would also, we all would go somewhere else. So that was a big failure uh, of, of the international, of the European uh, community, I would say. Uh, so therefore, I hope that this time, you know, we had this uh, um, conference, this pledging conference in London, uh, when close to 10 billion US dollars were pledged, but now pledge is not enough. They have to be, you know, paid uh, to UNHCR, but in particularly also to UNRWA. Uh, this is a Uni United uh, Nations Organization for the Palestinian Refugees. This is a case load hardly ever mentioned in, in public debates, and I made uh, also special, gave special attention to, to them, PRS, Palestinian Refugees from Syria. There were hundreds of thousands um, of, of Palestinians having lived in Syria for decades. And now, like the Syrians, they also flee and are very often not even recognized, not recognized as Syrian refugees. Very many um, of them are considered to be stateless because their status is unclear. 
So therefore, uh, through all traps and loopholes. And uh, lots of them <coughs> are in the Palestinian refugee camps, quarters of, of cities in Lebanon and Jordan. And uh, these camps were built in you know, 1948, 49, uh, when the Palestinians uh, fled from Israel. And, and now they accommodate fit the double of the original intended population, you know, not only Palestinians from Syria, but also Iraqis, Afghanis, uh, Afghanistan, uh, people from Eritrea, you know, all poor people of the world who got stranded uh, in Lebanon and, and Jordan. This is uh, we, really, we should pay more attention to this problem. And what about the Turkey-EU agreement? What would you like to say about that? Because there were so many expectations on that deal, but still so many criticized. Yeah. So to send back uh, refugees, could it be a solution? Or what would you like to say about this? No. Point? I mean, sending back uh, Syrian refugees or whatever kind of refugees uh, from Afghanistan, Iraq, or whatever country, from Greece to Turkey, without assessing what will happen to these people. Apparently, according to one uh, Turkish colleague of mine, there are 26 normal refugee camps, but there are also, to, according to her, 26 so-called removal detention centers, mm -hmm. where people are just like prisons. There's hardly no access for, for anybody, not the Red Crescent, not UNHCR. Horrible um, conditions, apparently people are beaten up, and uh, we fear or is there is some suspicion and some indication also that people who have been expelled from Greece to Turkey are, are being detained in these horrible uh, places. I urge the, the assembly to send a delegation um, to, to revise and, and to look in, into these uh, detention centers. Um, on the, I mean, we say the, the, the right of asylum has been you know, flawed. It's not uh, any longer in existence because uh, it's not clear who is, you know, determining who is being sent back. Uh, have they, uh, could they apply for asylum? We, from Kios, I know, no, there is nothing. There is no possible way to apply for asylum in, in Kios. There is no registration. People are just being kept. Uh, so the whole process, the legal, um, process is not secured at all. It is a is a loophole, is a, in the limbus. Therefore, we are very, very strongly against this. And uh, we should, rather than have strong resettlement programs, uh, also from Turkey, and definitely, but that has been promised now for months and months, from Italy and Greece. I mean, there are now the the, the big uh, numbers of refugees, and. Um, Whereas in Germany and in other countries, come on. I mean, if we take the, the percentage of refugees to the local population, like in Jordan and Lebanon, um, the EU member countries should at least uh, accept 27 million people, refugees. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, the ratio is every third inhabitant in, 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 in Jordan is a, uh, is a refugee. What mm -hmm. do you think? What will happen here? Mm -hmm. And before finishing, I would like to ask your opinion, because you are coming from Germany and representative uh, from Germany. So in your country, the situation of refugees and the position of the Germany, which is really faced, uh, which is an important country who faced with the refugee crisis as well. Well, you know, um, I was in Budapest uh, at this station this, uh, two, two, two days before, you know, Merkel allowed the trains to, to enter Germany. Uh, this situation was awful. I've never seen such a you know, mess, so many uh, small children. So I called the German embassy and I said, you have to do something about it because this will be explode. The situation is so explosive and urged them to come to the station. They didn't. <laughs> they always said to me, we will transmit your report and your information to Berlin. Maybe it helped a little bit. Anyhow. Now, in, at the beginning, you know, the Willkommen School tour, the culture of welcome, was uh, really impressive. Um, that changed. That changed uh, in New Year's Eve um, uh, in Cologne, after this allegedly uh, sexual assault, etc., etc. <coughs> and uh, now, I mean, we have daily 
more, more or less, um, att violent attacks on asylum uh, reception centers, <coughs> accommodation, <coughs> and uh, even in my own constituency, I had one. I would have never expected this. I was shocked to, he to hear that and to see it. <coughs> and uh, we are talking always about integration. Now we just uh, passed even a law. But integration is only possible if people, refugees, have a decent accommodation, if they are entitled to German language, if they are entitled to work. But we request from Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan, we should also fulfill in our countries, yeah? Uh, give them work permits. Because all these people want to work as soon as possible. Once, if you leave them months and months or a year in a cramped, completely over uh, filled, uh, let's say, big hall or whatever kind of horrible accommodation we have. I mean, people are getting sick, psychologically sick. Uh, traumatizing is coming back as a backflash um, very often. And they are completely desperate because many of those refugees had really um, so much hope. Uh, coming to Germany and then this is paradise. This is, of course, not a realistic uh, picture of Germany, but uh, this is sometimes in, in, in the mind. And then they realize this is not paradise. It is sometimes like hell. So they fall in a deep, deep hole. And uh, there, this is uh, the, the um, danger for me as well. So we need to, as soon as, soon as possible, quick as possible, really, you know, uh, give them decent accommodation of what, what I just said. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Scott.